Good day and thank you for joining CivilNet today. My guest is Dr. Fernando Casalbertoa. He's a research fellow at the University of Nottingham, also the co-chair of the Research Network and Election of the Council of Europe Studies, also a fellow at the Appella Institute. Thank you for being here. Um, given your extensive research into political party systems and um, knowing that you also have studied the Armenia's case, I, my first question was going to be if in 25 years Armenia went from commun communism to semi-presidential to now parliamentary, these many changes in such period of time, is this customary in, in connection to other countries, post-Soviet countries, is this a good dynamic, is this indicative of something? Well, I mean, the truth is that uh, all uh, post-communist countries have to experience a, a lot of changes, you know, changes that in many cases they were simultaneous, you know, economic changes, political changes, in some cases, you know, problems with the statehood, you know, Armenia also had this problem, you know, when they declared independence, you know, at the beginning of the, of the 90s. Uh, perhaps the more interesting uh, path uh, that we can see is the changes that we are seeing lately, you know, with uh, the constitutional reform, you know, I mean, also too many changes at the same time, not only what you are mentioning, a change from the type of regime, from semi-presidentialism to parliamentarism, but as far as I, I know, you know, they are changing also the electoral system, introducing a new, very peculiar electoral system that has never, ever been really uh, proof, not even in Italy, where it seems to be the model that currently following. I was going to ask you that next. So since the referendum last year, have you been following the changes that has been the, the consequent changes that are taking place in Armenia's constitution, electoral code being one? Are these explained in any way? Are these positive? Are these uh, helpful in the development of parties, political party system in Armenia? Well, the hope is for the best, always, no? Uh, you, when you make changes, you know, you usually try to make it for, for, for improving, no? Uh, the, the truth is that, you know, the problem perhaps I see with all these changes is that it doesn't seem to be a unanimous uh, change, you know, with these kind of debates between, you know, the government and the opposition, you know, also the referendum uh, was not, we can say, uh, unanimous in terms of, you know, the acceptance uh, by, the, by, the, by the voters. Um, what is certainly controversial, you know, with different opinions by, for example, the Council of Europe on the new electoral, the electoral system. So perhaps the problem is, is, is the fact that it seems to be more a governmental driven reform rather than an agreement between, you know, the opposition and the, the, the government. And this obviously creates certain problems, uh, especially for the future. You know, uh, Poland, for example, is a clear case where the constitution in 1997 was also passed with an important friction between the government and opposition. And since then, you know, I mean, uh, opposition now in government has been trying to Changed the constitution that was uh, uh, approved in 1987, and the main, uh, the same may happen here in Armenia, in the sense that perhaps when the current opposition will become part of the government, if it ever happens, you know, they will try to uh, change uh, again the constitution, and this is certainly uh, not very good prospect for the stability, the stability of the country. So for an electoral code or for, for the authorities and the opposition to agree on certain changes to the electoral code and say we will implement them only when we are fine, we've given 18 million dollars of financing from abroad, only then these changes will, uh, these agreements will come into force. Is this something that has a precedent in uh, recent European or world history as far as election electoral codes go? Uh, you mean the controversy between yes. the opposition and the and the and the no, government? No, as like when something is they've reached an agreement and the government seems to have agreed with the opposition. Okay, and later and they don't implement. And later yes. they don't implement it, or they try to implement it in a different way. Well, I mean, the truth is that you know they tend these things tend to happen in uh, not fully democratized uh, countries. You know, uh, this is the truth. No? Uh, usually, you know, I mean, there is always tensions between you know government and opposition. But you know, you always try to get uh, a kind of agreement because at the end of the day, you know, democracy is not a one-party winning situation, and this is what makes democracy interesting: the possibility of alternation. Something that, unfortunately, as we all know here in Armenia, hasn't happened. 
you know, I mean, Lin Sang Stepan, you know, uh, two important academics that wrote especially about this region in comparative uh, perspective with, for example, Latin America and Southern Europe, they uh, agree that in order to really have democratic consolidation, you need to have alternation. And therefore, you know, if you don't have alternation, you know, it's very difficult that you have democratic consolidation and that you may, you, we can say, reach agreements. And when the agreements are reached, you implement them. Yeah. And this new you referendum, it's creating basically a two block party system eventually. Is this going to help with the development of other political forces, political parties? in Armenia? Well, I, 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 it's good that you are asking me this question because I will be talking about this uh, uh, this afternoon at the American University invited by the Pella Institute. Um, there, I, 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 I mean, the, the thing is that, let's say, there are two forces here pulling to the appearance of this two block party system. On the one hand, we have, you know, the change from semi-presidentialism to parliamentarism that uh, as I will show this afternoon in a comparative perspective of 48 countries in, in 168 years, tends to reduce the number of parties. This is something. And on the other hand, we have the electoral system that, as it was agreed, you know, also tends to reduce because of the high electoral thresholds and also the second round of voting. And therefore, you know, uh, we still don't know what is going to happen, you know, because we still don't know even how it's going to be implemented. But the, the beginning of this two-block party system is, is uh, you know, is, is foreseeable. If you ask me to what extent a two-block party system is good for democracy, well, like in life, you have trade-offs. You know, it may well be for certain things and bad for others. For example, in the case of stability, stability we can say in terms of government alternation, stability in terms of formation of the government, you know, it is positive. In terms of accountability, we can even say that it's positive. Because, you know, you know who is governing, you know who has the responsibility, you vote them out or you vote them in again. In terms of representation, this may be problematic because, you know, with a two-block party system, you know, especially, you know, in the type of party system and ten, the type of two-block party system that tend to develop in this region of the world, in this type of semi-democratic, you know, also like in the Balkans, you always have one leading party in each block. And the other parties tend to follow suit. And therefore, you know, in terms of representing, you know, the different spectrums of society, you know, they tend to fail. You mentioned that the course we've taken now politically in Armenia is that eventually the, the, we could deduce that the number of political parties is going to come down. Yet what we see on the ground is that more political parties are emerging. Uh, what is the explanation of this? And also historically, Armenia's, you know, the emergence of difficult, uh, different political parties in Armenia, uh, what's your evaluation of that? Well, uh, I'm talking always in the long term. You know, this is a long-term trend, of course, you know. Uh, usually when there are changes because of the uncertainty and the instability, you know, uh, people tend to uh, take advantage of that opportunity in order to create uh, new parties. Uh, what we have seen till now is a rather high fragmentation, you know, at the electoral level you have always have, you know, five, six parties, you know, uh, what is, you know, uh, rather high, you know, in comparative uh, perspective. But this is also because of the system you were having, you know, the fact that you had these two dual arenas of competition, you know, the presidential elections and the parliamentary elections, you know, uh, a lot of, you know, American Armenians, you know, well, well, oligarchs, let's call it somehow, you know, were taking the chances, you know, to be visible in politics you know, perhaps to connect business and politics, use patronage, you know, to get visibility with elections and therefore they needed a vehicle and, you know, this was the parties. But in many cases, you know, we may talk about this a bit further, you know, where they were empty vessels and this had negative consequences for the institutionalization of political parties. While, you know, in the long term, parliamentary systems tend to uh, make parties stronger because, you know, you need really to have, you know, these organizations in order later, you know, to implement your policies, in order even later to elect the president that is elected through the parliament itself and requires certain compromises. Uh, yeah. And in Armenia's case where we already see that political parties are not equally uh, strong or equally weak when we see that already one party is over governing, uh, how is this going to, is this going to reproduce the, the power in a way? 
Well, you know, this is a very, you know, it's a very difficult question. You know, predicting the future, you know, is one of the no, most difficult No, also maybe uh, taking into consideration the political and the public mindset and psychology in Armenia. Okay, well, I mean, if we look at the patterns that we have seen now, what we see, you know, is a uh, party, party politics in Armenia have been characterized, I would say, by two main features. One is personalization, so, you know, leaders are very important. And therefore, you know, parties are living, you know, on the second on the second place, even when voters made their electoral choices. And you know, obviously, uh, things are not going to change, you know, from one day to the other. And obviously, you know, it will need, you know, the change with the political culture somehow. And the other one is about patronage. It's about you know using the state as a resource for you know both by, both for you know uh, asking for support. And therefore, you know, I mean. Um, what we can see is because the parliament, the changes are going to make stronger two different parties, is you know the reproduction of the same patterns in just two parties. Usually, the one that is already in government and already has all the structures and all the state resources, and another one that managed to lead the opposition. Speaking of the opposition, Armenia has a history of consolidating an opposition and failing. In your in history or in your experience with successful opposition parties, what is Armenia lacking or what is the model that could work in Armenia as for, for Armenia to have a consolidated political opposition party? Well, unity. This is the thing that is lacking, you know, I mean, one, the, 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 you know, when, when um, certain, especially, you know, in this kind of semi-democratic, you know, context, you know, what is needed is an alternation. And for, an, you know, for the government party that is all powerful, you know, has all the state resources, all what we have been talking during the interview, what you need is that all the opposition, you know, forget their differences, you know, and think that they have a common, let's call it enemy, you know, uh, and uh, you know, uh, establish a, a unique list uh, that at least allows them to go to government. You know, I'm sure that you know later there will be quarrels, there will be problems, but you know, the problem is perhaps that you know you have to think about the general interest. I know that this is very difficult, and even in you know very consolidated democracies, you know, all, all politicians have their parties and interests. But sometimes, you know, they try to, you know, forget about this. And especially, you know, if you really want to consolidate our democracy, you really need this. And therefore, you know, in my view, is the only way, you know, to forget about, you know, personal difference, think about, you know, the general interest, you know, and, and, and propose a, a, a clear uh, alternation, you know, alternative for voters, of course, yes, because yeah. voters, just one thing, voters, if they see, you know, that the parties are not united, if the parties are quarreling among themselves, if the parties, you know, do not compromise among them, when they have a lot to gain, it's impossible that voters will vote for those parties. Sorry. Yes, and the general question, um, is the lack of ideology in generally in Armenia and in the world today in political parties something that's making them weaker? Because a lot of political parties are working as organizations rather than political parties. Is, is a strong ideology something that might be missing in consolidating the opposition in Armenia or other political forces? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, this is not a problem in Armenia, as you mentioned, you know. I think this is certainly a general, a general problem, you know. Um, I mean, uh, the cry, let's say, you know, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, the triumph of democracy, you know, uh, Huntington, Fukuyama, you know, uh, uh, the end of history, you know, it was not really the end of history, but it was clear, you know, the end of this polarization, you know, between two different clear, you know, uh, ideologies, uh, has, we can say, weakened political parties. Because what it happens is that, you know, because political parties, they don't differentiate so much to, to, from each other, they tend to converge in the center. This means that, you know, voters are not facing different policy alternatives, it's simply different teams of politicians Versions. that are going to implement the same program. You know, and this has an important uh, uh, implication for the tiredness of the voters themselves. You know, we see not only in Armenia, you know, in all Europe, you know, voters tend to go to vote uh, less, tend to participate less, tend to be members of parties less, because you know they see that you know they are you know the same dogs with different colors, if you if you allow me the expression. And obviously, the problem of converging into the certain means that, like you know, in a black hole, you know, it explodes, it leaves the streams 
ends of the, po the, the political spectrum empty, allowing for the appearance of, you know, populist, you know, nationalist, extreme right, extreme right uh, parties. So, you know, it's not uh, uh, something that uh, is happening only in Armenia. It happens also in other countries. Perhaps in Armenia it's also visible because, you know, the current uh, party, Republican, the Republican Party, you know, occupies the center, tries to go with parties on the center right, parties on the center left, and you have a very strong center. The same happened in, in, in Italy uh, in the, during the First Republic. Okay. Thank you very much and thank you for being here today and I wish you best of luck uh, at the American University during your lecture today. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for the interview. We thank the viewers for joining us as well.